Holly, hello, I'm Marie Fashionista Sherry, and do you remember not that long ago I shared my adorable thrift haul? Well, I was thinking about what I wanted to make with some of those things. And then I remembered a project that I did way back in 2014. And I used the top of a pair of overall shorts and a lace tablecloth and made an absolutely adorable overall lace maxi dress. So I thought, why not revisit that tutorial and give it a few tweaks and updates and um, yeah, use this adorable apron that I got in that thrift haul, plus this fabulous lace tablecloth and make myself another absolutely fantastic lace overall dress. So let's get making. <laughs> For this hopefully a quick and easy project, all you need is your thrifted apron, the kind that has this bib on the top and then the half skirt on the bottom, plus a awesomely gorgeous vintage lace round tablecloth. I mean, it doesn't have to be vintage, but if it's a round tablecloth of any kind, it's going to work for this project. Okay, so the cool thing about this apron is it already has, you know, the bib here, the straps here, and the crisscross back. Yay! Plus, with the tie, in theory, right, in my brain, I'm thinking I should be able to remove the bottom apron part and keep all the ties and this waistband here and then simply add my lovely lacy tablecloth as the skirt and uh, i'm not sure what to do with the waistband because i don't want it to tie up maybe we'll add elastic i'm not quite sure yet but let's see how we go <laughs> Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is remove the top part of the apron from the bottom part, and I could take my seam ripper and carefully pick all of this apart, but I'm not going to do that because I want to chop it a little bit below this uh, bottom seam here, just in case I need a little bit more fabric when I'm making it. So I'm just going to cut it straight across about two centimeters below below the seam that's attaching the top to the bottom. Okay, so I have the bib part now on my body and you can see here I have loosely pinned it around my waist, like super loosely because I want this to be quite a loose and easy breezy twirly fit around my waist area so I have you know quite a bit of space there and I also need a seam allowance as well so how I did that I just put this on and then safety pinned it and now I'm gonna see if I can pull it down over my hips so I know, yes I can, yay, I will be able to get the dress on and off either over my head or down my hips. So yeah, now I'm going to go see how I'm going to stitch it together. Okay, so I now have it properly pinned together here and I'm just going to trim this side and leave enough that I can tuck it under and then I'm going to trim this side and leave enough that I can tuck it under and then I'm going to go stitch them together. La la! It is now all nicely stitched together and I can now start on the bottom part which is that cool lacy tablecloth. Okay, so I have my tablecloth and I have folded it in half once. And this is always a bit of a challenge here to try to get the edges lined up as evenly as possible, especially when it's a round tablecloth that uh, is definitely maybe close to my own age. <laughs> anyway, so once you have the first fold as evenly as you can get it, you are then going to fold it in half again and then lay it flat with the pointed part facing up. So you should have a triangular shape now that has a rounded bottom to it. And again, all I did was fold it in half once and then 
fold it in half as evenly as I could one more time. And then I have my nice little point at the top. And this is about the center, so that's okay. That's gonna be our waist hole area. And as I always say, go ahead and chop off just the top because you can always chop off more, but trying to add fabric on to a garment is a little bit more difficult, especially when it is a waist hole. So we're just going to chop off this top point in kind of a gentle rounded shape like that. And now I'm gonna open it up and see if I can get it over my hips. Okay, this was a laughably small hole, so I have refolded it all, and now I'm going to chop off some more. All right, now let's see if it's gonna fit. Okay, so this absolutely does fit me now, but you can see it is fraying like crazy all the way around. So I'm gonna go do a very, very quick hem around the top of this, just so, you know, it doesn't fall apart before I get to the next step. <laughs> Okay, so we are no longer fraying and I have a nice clean edge to work with. Now let's see how we're gonna attach the top part to this lovely lacy bottom. Okay, so I have the top part laid flat here and I have my bottom skirt. And when I put them together, it is like pretty darn close here on the ends. It's like millimeter difference. So I think I did pretty good there. So now all I have to do is tuck the top over top of the bottom and I'm going to sew these with the right side of the skirt to the wrong side of the top part and hopefully that's going to all stitch together very very nicely because it is pretty darn even. Okay, I just wanted to quickly show you that it did indeed all pin together absolutely perfectly here. I might have to do a tiny bit of stretching. Like you see, there's this one little spot, just one little spot where I can stretch it to match up there. But now I'm going to go stitch together and then we'll see what it looks like. <laughs> la la! Okay, this came out even better than I had envisioned it, except for... Uh, this part, this gaping, gaping back here. So in order to solve that, I have cut a piece of elastic and I'm going to stitch this from one side here where the strap is all the way around to the other strap and la la, that should hopefully give me enough of a elastic waist here in the back to tighten it up so it's not um, gaping down like that and, you know, flashing the, the top of my behind to the world. So I'm gonna go stitch this on and then we're gonna see how it looks when we try it on and style it up. <laughs> more adorable than I thought it was going to. I just, I mean, okay, the crochet and lace dress I made a few tutorials ago was, was too cute, right? Like it was sweetie petite forest fairy. This one, I don't know, it is just crazy adorable, I think. And the best part is, you know, uh, you see this lace here? This is actually the slip that I thrifted at the same time as the apron and the tablecloth. So I'm actually able to wear three of the items that I recently thrifted all together in a completely cutie patootie outfit. <laughs> now, absolutely let me know if you're gonna try to make one of these because it's just, I can't. It's just so cute. It is so cute and it is so comfortable. Even though I do have three layers on. I have the lace vintage full slip and I have this little white dress on and then I have the, the pinafore. Ha ha, that's what it's called, right? This is called a pinafore. <laughs> so let me know if you're gonna make your own 
vintage inspired pinafore out of thrifted upcycled items and you know what time it is guys it is a troll time once again before we jump into troll time though i just want to just want to point out my uh, accessories here they are made out of scraps and i've had them for years and i will link the original tutorial down below for you but here let's just dive right into troll time all right hi just can you say it right hi it's me Chantal. so i kept my job from last time which is just great isn't it and now uh, it's so lippy on my teeth right is that okay all right we're well, good okay we're fine now so yeah if you remember i'm Chantal and i'm new and uh i did such a good job last time that you guys actually said to uh refashionista sherry you'd like to see me again so here i am hooray i'm so grateful thank you so much because as i said before i really need this job so i'm so grateful to you anyway let's just jump right in we're doing another troll, troll time for uh, Refashion Easter Sherry. And this one's a little bit longer. It's a little bit longer. Uh, but uh, here's what, here's what uh, this person says. And this person is Naomi. Right, okay. So Naomi says, love your videos. But it's so annoying when you try to sell your books and stuff. We only watch you for the free tutorials, not to buy your crap. Your channel has ads, so you get paid more than enough from YouTube. Stop pushing us to buy what we don't want and be happy we watch you at all. Oh my God, that's right. I don't even know what to say about that because that's just crazy. Uh, first of all, very long comment, right? Uh, second of all, uh is that true do you guys only watch refashion easter sherry because it's free tutorials that's that's it that's the only reason because it's free uh the person starts out saying she loves her videos though and then her big problem is that sherry mentions sometimes that she has some other stuff for sale uh uh yeah that's because um youtube doesn't pay anything it doesn't pay the bills you know uh a little bit of home truth here for naomi refashion easter shower has been doing this for uh, just over a decade now and just last year just last year so just over a year last june june 2022 she was monetized so for that old time before that, for over nine years, she was doing it for free. And the same over on her blog. She does it for free. Literally nothing. No money's coming from that. And uh, if you want to even try to say she makes anything, well, you know what? She took a screenshot of her most recent uh, recent money there. And this shows, okay, this is the back end of her channel. You can see it's her it's refashion easter sherry confessions of a refresh it's a back into her channel and if we do a close-up we can see that is for the last 28 days is 137 dollars and 66 cents canadian that's it so for about a month she gets between 130 and 140 uh dollars canadian so it's not a lot of money can you live on that where do you live in the world that you can live on $130 a month, pay, paying your rent and your bills and feeding your family, take care of your, your kid, all this stuff. Can you do it for 130, 140 quid, 140 dollars, sorry, Canadian dollars? Uh, no, I don't think you can. So, so let's just stop that right now. And, uh, most YouTubers, like the big ones who are getting any kind of big money, they're not getting it from YouTube. Although, of course, you get more money, the more views you get which if you notice refashion easter sherry doesn't get a lot of views on videos she averages about 200 that's not very many at all it's nothing it's nothing which is why it's so important for you guys to engage and like and share 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 get more and more people watching and enjoying our videos and subscribing and then maybe she can make a little bit more money but other than that 130 dollars is nothing it's nothing, right? It's nothing. And if you think it is, well, I want to know where you live that is so cheap because 
it's not cheap where she is, you know, $140 is nothing. That's, that's not even covering her mobile phone bill because in Canada, it's like one of the highest, uh, highest for mobile phones. So that's terrible. And you know what? She has to do all the work behind the scenes too. So it's, it's a lot of work for, for, for nothing really, for nothing. Um, and so her trying to sell her courses or her eBooks or the stuff she makes, you know, give her a little bit of a break here, maybe. And uh, if you guys do want to support her, there's so many different ways to do it that don't cost anything at all. You know, like I said, sharing, liking, engaging on all of her platforms, it all does it. It all helps a little bit. But if you do want to support her, join this channel. It's super cheap. Join her on Patreon. Buy her eBooks. They're super cheap. Take her course. It's awesome and it's not expensive at all for what you're getting. Is it? No, it's not. Um, anyway, so I hope, you know, that cleared things up a little bit for Naomi, you know, uh, she doesn't make a lot of money at all. YouTube does not pay the bills here, not at all. Um, and the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes and goes on to making the videos and everything, it's definitely not worth it. You're deaf. She's definitely not doing it for the money, right? $140, $140 is not enough per month for the amount of hours and days that per month that go into uh, putting out, you know, say 10 to 12 videos a month. That's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, I hope that cleared things up a little bit, gave you a little bit of a peek behind the scenes. And um, until next time, stay safe, stay well, and we'll catch you on the zigzag. I remembered it that time. I remembered it. I did. This is Confessions of a Refashionista.